and we're live. Hi, welcome to My Divorce Real Estate. I'm Amber Gifford, and this is my husband and teammate, Scotty Gifford. And today, we're going to talk about child, child support. support. So whether you're going to be receiving it or you're going to be paying it out to your soon-to-be ex, that's the big question everybody wants to know. Yeah. What am I going to be paying and how much am I going to be getting? For sure. It's a big question on everyone's mind. So Scotty has created a calculator on our website at www.thegiffordgroup.net. And mm -hmm. this calculator is an estimate because we are not lawyers, but he created this calculator so you can play around with the numbers and estimate what you would be paying out if you were paying or receiving child support. Yeah, and the reason I created this calculator is because I couldn't find a good one that did it. And also because when I went through my divorce, uh, that was a big fear in my mind was, well, how much child support am I going to be paying out? And how much money does that leave me with? So this is calculator is going to allow you to do that. It's going to allow you to put in a few numbers to put it into the calculator and it'll quickly give you out how much child support would be requirement on this based on the Texas state guidelines. Yeah, he didn't just make this up in his head. It's actually based off the Texas guidelines. So if you're not in Texas, well, um, I'm sure we can connect you with someone else where that can help you. Yeah, this is strictly, strictly based on the Texas state guidelines. So if you live in a different state, uh, you'll need to find another calculator probably for you. So well, let's uh, check it out. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so here we have the, we're on the giffordgroup.net on the child support calculator. And this calculator is based on the Texas support uh, guidelines. So one child, 20%, two children, 25%, three children, 30%, four children, 35%, and five children, 40% or five or more actually. So down below, you can just jump down to scroll down um, to the calculator. I did want to mention real quickly though, if you if you have income less than $1,000, um, they adjusted those a little bit and this calculator does not work below $1,000. So um, if they do, you, you have to adjust it, you know, It'd be close, but there'll be adjustments on this. But let's go ahead and look at that there real quick and see uh, how it works. So there's just really four inputs for you. Inputs, I kind of made it pretty simple for you. So um, just kind of start with your income here and say you can adjust this by $100, $100 or you can just type in, you know, your exact amount um, of income. And then you can check off whether you are, if you're, if you're employed by someone else, it's already default that way. And if you're self-employed, you can go ahead and check that box off. And what that box is actually going to do is it's going to adjust your social security and uh, Medicaid taxes that are taken out because it, when you are employed, uh, you, your employer plays, pays the other half of that. That's seven, um, the total of 15.3% of your income goes to social security and Medicaid. Your employer pays half of that. And if you're self-employed, you got to pay the full 15.3%. So that's taken to effect there. And that's going to reduce your net resources. And then, so I have another one here. This third category here is for medical, dental, or actually union fees, which can be deducted out of here. So if you are going to be providing, you know, medical and dental, uh, you can deduct that and then over for future net resources. And then the last entry is the number of children. So and it kind of shows you if you do have one children, one child, just 20%, and then two, 25, so it just kind of adjusts for you and let you know which, which one's going to be calculating there. And so that's going to be adjusting the net resources um, projected obligation. So in this situation, say we got $3,750 for net income. Let's say we are self-employed. We will be paying medical and dental of $250 a month. And we have uh, two children. So it'll say, hey, we got to pay support. Uh, standard is 25%. We'll take out our Medicaid. And, and Social Security taxes. Uh, this is an estimate for your federal income taxes. Um, like I say, each person's deductions will vary. So this is just a, you know based off the standard uh, inf information we have. So this one could vary a little bit. Um, and then this would be your net resources available. And then, so what you're gonna do is your net resources times the, the number of children you have, the 25%, is gonna show you projected outcomes. So in the situation, you know, they would say your monthly obligation would be six hundred fifty-four dollars for the two children if you're making thirty-seven dollars. Okay, so hopefully that gave you a quick explanation of what you can expect based on the inputs there and the outputs. So at least gives you a, a great estimate and a great starting point to go off of. 
So something that's kind of cool that you can utilize your child support is if you are purchasing a home, refinancing, buying out your spouse, that money can be used to qualify you for your new home loan. Um, mm -hmm. There are some stipulations though. Yeah, there's two stipulations that go along with that at least. And those two would be, um, you must have been receiving that money for six months and the money must continue on for three years. So if you have a, say you have a child that is 16 years old and they will be turning 18 and that child support's gonna stop, you probably won't be able to count that as income as far as the lenders goes. Right, so it's not taxed and it's not a deduction and you can use it to qualify for a loan. However, it doesn't always have to be when your decree is filed within your county. Sometimes it can be um, through the temporary orders and even sometimes before that, if you had been receiving money on a regular basis, um, maybe say you had like an allowance or whatever, they can use that money. Totally depends on the lender, depends on your loan officer, and you need to discuss it with them about what your options are. But if you're not working with someone who is a lender in the divorce arena, I highly recommend that you do and we can get you connected with one because they're going to know these sorts of things unlike someone who doesn't deal with divorce on a regular basis. Yeah, absolutely. It's always best to work with the experts in the field and that's what we always recommend to you. Get connected to the smartest people you can, right? So that's great if it's me and I'm receiving money, mm -hmm. I can use that. What about if it's you and you're paying money? So like say in my situation when I had to pay child support out, so then actually is, is, a, is a debt that counts against me. So that's going to count against me to be buy a house in the future, right? Um, that is a reduction of my, so it's going to go in my debt to income ratio, right? So like I say, we're not lenders either, but we do know enough about this that it's, we know it is going to affect you on the buy side if you're going to be paying out the child support. So that's going to some something that you're going to want to take into play, even if you're going to consider, you know, doing the buyout, which we also have, on, you know, if you're going to consider staying in the home and buying out your spouse, uh, it's still going to be a debt that's counted against you. So that might be something else you might want to take into account whether you could qualify for the loan to buy out your spouse. Absolutely. So the big takeaways today are that we have this amazing calculator on our website at thegiffergroup.net. Go play around with the numbers, see what you might be receiving or that you have to pay out so you're in the know because knowledge is power after all. Um, basically that you can use these monies that you're receiving to qualify for a loan if for two reasons that we spoke about. One, you have to have it for six months and then three consecutive years. Mm -hmm. You need to be working with the lender in the divorce arena. And then it becomes a debt if you are actually purchasing a home and you're paying these monies out to your ex. So that's all we have for today. Yeah, and if you are going out through, you know, this is the early stages and you're doing a fact-finding mission and you're looking for a little bit more knowledge, uh, you can go download our free divorce resource at mydivorcerealestate.com. Just enter your information in there and get that free resource, which we has a lot of information on there for you. Thanks for watching. And as always, Scotty and I are here to bring you real life experiences to all your real estate needs.